Radio Rahim with marvelous Marvin Hagler. You're, you were the first fight I ever saw, man. I, you were the first fight I've ever seen on TV as a kid. Right. It's such an honor to meet you. Everyone is so excited for, for you to be here. What's the most important aspect of this night for you, and why is it, to, why is it special for Marvin Hagler? Well, I'm speechless, man. Uh, I really don't know what to say, but uh, I'm very happy to be here and to be honored with this great gift tonight. And uh, it shows my legacy. And I believe that uh, all great champions that are legend, it's great to be able to see your legend while you're still alive. Sugar Ray Leonard said you were the one that he was most excited about seeing here tonight. How does it feel when you see Sugar Ray Leonard? And what kind of emotion does it oh, bring you're up? You're starting a lot of trouble, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys. Thank you so you. much, Marvin. First um, time in you know, boxing, I was like, I don't know, seven, eight years of age. Number two boys club in Washington, D.C. And um, I recall that it was like an exhibition. I put this huge mouthpiece in my mouth, um, this, 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 this um, headgear, these huge gloves, and I'm punching around, punching around, and this kid punched me in the nose and it hurt like hell, and I quit. So I have a history of retirement. <laughs> oh, we'll get to that. Oh, we'll get, we'll to, get that. to that. Is there anything you can tell us that we haven't heard about the ending of that fight? No, I, I think the fact that because of all people, Duran uh, indicating that that was it, he quit, no moss, whatever. Did you ever hear no moss? I didn't. If he had said, I wouldn't know what it meant anyway. <laughs> I mean, not until people told me later, but. Without, when he did this, that means he didn't want it anymore. I mean, I could read, I mean, sign languages. I mean, that's a good gesture, like, come on, let's stop this, or, you know. Um, what was the first thing that went through your head when he I did that? I thought it was a trick. I thought he was trying to get me close. I thought he was trying to lure me closer, because um, you got to understand, too, the, first, the fight in Montreal and the fight in New Orleans was totally different. You know, one was toe-to-toe, -to -toe and the other one was like, catch me if you can. And... Um, I just, I really thought it was a trick. I really thought it was a trick until the referee looked at me and said, that's it, that's it. The first fight with the hitman, Tommy Hearns. That, that was a fight that um, was a defining moment for me. Uh, and for Tommy, I mean, Tommy got credit also. Um, he was, he, he, he's one of the most difficult guys to, to face. Uh, he has speed, he has height, he has reach, he has power. He has every attribute, every physical attribute. Um, a huge heart. A heart that sometimes gets him in trouble. Um, in that fight, um, you know, I could not I could not get beyond that jab of his until I started using my jab. But that didn't take place until I, I think I heard him in the fifth or sixth, fifth round, I think it was, fifth or sixth round. With a body, the body shots hurting too. Yeah, the body shots were, were doing damage. Um, but then the fight was still Tommy's, from my understanding. And um, I got back to my corner because it, after a while he started to box me, which which to me was like, what? I didn't know he could do this. Oh, this well. I didn't think he could yeah, box that well. He took on the role of the aggressor. Yeah, and all of a sudden now I'm chasing Tommy around the ring. He's boxing me, he's jabbing me, and keeping me at distance. And then Angelo had the perfect sound bite. You know, he said, you're blowing it, son, you're blowing it. Which meant, without showing signs of desperation, there is an urgency. And that, that hit home when he said that. You know, it hit home. And I went out there, and I, I, I kept trying to get closer. To get closer. I was pa patient with his virtue, they say. And I was waiting, waiting. And then all of a sudden, I clocked him with the right hand. And he did that. And... I don't know where it come, came from. I call it hidden reservoir of strength. All of a sudden, I just had this burst of energy, and I just stopped throwing punches. And but every time I get him going, he'll fall on the ropes. He always, he never just fell flat. He caught himself on the ropes. And um, that fight took every every ounce of my my heart, spirit, and soul to beat Tommy Hearns. Radio Raheem with Tommy, the hitman Hearns. Uh, I don't get to see you out so much, and you're here with, uh, you were sitting with Sugar Ray Leonard, and you're here for the Pacquiao Marquez fight, I assume. Can you talk to me about what it was like when you and, and Leonard were having your series of fights? Oh man, you know, when, when I think back that fight, man, it's like the best thing that ever could have happened for both of us because we brought so many people from, from all around the world to come out 
to be able to fight. And, you know, it was just, it was total excitement for myself to even just get prepared for the fight, you know. And then walking into the ring the day of the fight, oh, man, it was so exciting, man. I was like, I want to lose my mind up in here, man. I, I mean, it was, it was just awesome. I enjoyed performing for the people. The people just... This, this made me feel so good, so good. Now the two of you are forever linked in boxing history. I talked to Leonard earlier and he said in that second fight when you got the draw, you deserved the win. Has he ever told you that? I, I made him, I made him talk, you know, because he knew he didn't win, so I had to make him talk or else I was going to get him while he's getting him all the time. He knew, he knew me, he knew I am be playing. When I said, you better tell me what happened right now or else, he just woke up quick. Uh, Tommy, uh, last question. You know, when you see these series of fights with Marquez and Pacquiao, and you know what you went through with not getting the decision you deserve, do you have sympathy for Marquez, and do you think that he can win on the fourth, the fourth comeback? You know, as far as sympathy is concerned, I think that no man that's in boxing won't, won't want to have sympathy for. Him. All they want to do is go out and do the best they possibly can. I, I wish both guys the best of luck. And last question, Tommy. Uh, upcoming fighters, guys who look up to you, you're one of the legends in our sport. What kind of advice would you give this upcoming generation? I just tell the guys, you know, right now to basically just concentrate on your on your skills. Work on your skills. Try try to develop your skill because that, that's what you're gonna need in a fight. When you're in a, in a good fight, you're gonna need your skills to pull you to, to pull you over to the next side. If you if you can't if you don't have any skills to pull you over to the next side, you don't have nothing, you're gonna lose the fight. Uh, if you wanna win, work on your skills and try to get to be the best that you possibly can be. Radio Raheem with the legend, Roberto Duran. People saw the interview we just did a few minutes ago and they have some, a few more questions, man. Where do you place yourself on the pound per, four pound all-time list? Where are you? te colocas en la lista del mejor libra por libra del orbe? ¿En qué número te colocas tú en toda la historia? I feel I'm the number one. I'm the number one in the, you know, in the world. That's what I think. We know. Go ahead. Dile que ha peleado en cinco décadas y, y he sido campeón en cinco categorías subiendo de peso y pelea 15 asaltos, que son muy pocos que lo han hecho. I fought in five decades. I fought in five way, no. Six times world champion, four weight classes. So I think I deserved that position. And at that time we used to fight 15 rounds. <laughs> Everybody knows that the man who just retired, Floyd Mayweather, considers himself the best ever. Could you beat Floyd Mayweather? If so, how would you do it? Floyd Mayweather acaba de se, supuestamente de retirarse y se considera el mejor peleador de toda la vida de todo el mundo. Si tú pelearas contra él, ¿cuál sería el resultado? Dile que para mí no hay ningún problema porque Mayweather aprendió de Roberto Durán, yo no aprendí nada de él. Y yo, y, Si él viene a pelear conmigo, él no va para ningún lado, porque tengo ese modo de pelear, él lo aprendió a mí, y yo sé mucho, mucha forma como pelear. Floyd Mayweather learned my style. He learned my style, and he don't go nowhere. If he fights me, I will defeat him. Everyone's seen these headphones around your, uh, your neck here. What does Roberto Duran listen to walking around during the day? Te estamos viendo con esa, esa, esos este, audífonos. ¿Qué música estás escuchando? Ah, dile que acabo de llegar de, de Venezuela y me, me gustó una, una música llanera y esa es la música que estoy oyendo, música venezolana. I just came from Venezuela and I just listen to the, 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 the music from Venezuela. That's what I'm listening right now. Pero que estoy un poco triste porque se me perdieron mis dos teléfonos más importantes en Venezuela. Los teléfonos o el número? Los dos teléfonos. But I'm very sad because I lost my two phones in Venezuela, so I don't know where I left those phones. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, there's a big movie coming out about you. Uh, talk to me about the film, and what did that take you back through your life? Was it difficult to watch your life unfold that way? Sé que viene una película sobre tu vida. Fue difícil ver los momentos difíciles de tu vida en la película. Dile al que ahora mismo, ahora mismo estoy en una obra de teatro en Panamá de la vida de de Roberto Durán y ha sido uno lleno completo, dile. Uh, right now I've been doing one hour in the theater about my life and has been a full, full, uh, you know, a lot of attendance, a lot of public came to those, those, those shows in, my th in the theater. So that's part of, the, of my life. Y que la película 
va a salir pronto, pero no la he visto todavía. Y que la película va a traer mucha risa y mucho dolor. Que, va, que yo tengo pensado, si esta película va bien, tengo pensado hacer la segunda parte donde hubo mucho, mucha canalla que me hicieron. I haven't seen the movie, but you, you will see a la, la, people laughing, you will see sad things, and I'm, I'm probably I'm going to make the second one because a lot of people, Robert, they, they did a lot of robbery on myself, they steal things on myself, he wears so sad things on, in that second movie. So a lot of people, they're going to know what's happened in my life because honestly, you know, I, I, I was part of the robbery from a lot of people. A lot of tough things happen for you in the ring and outside of the ring. If there was one thing you could change, what would it be? Muchas cosas difíciles, duras, pasaron en tu vida y en tu carrera. Si, tú pudiera, si te pudieras a pensar, ¿qué cosa cambiarías? ¿O qué cosa no te gustaría haber hecho? Si volviera a nacer, <coughs> dile que si volviera a nacer va a pasar lo mismo, porque nadie nace sabiendo. If I, I reborn, it's going to happen the same thing because nobody, nobody born knowing things. Voy a seguir siendo el mismo. Y va a pasar lo mismo. Nothing, gonna, change. nothing is going to change. I'm going to be the same. El único que puede cambiar el, el mundo de Dios. The only who can change things is God. Y nadie nace con inteligencia. And nobody born with intelligence. <laughs> And very lastly, El Campeón, what is your proudest moment in boxing? What do you feel the most pride about? El momento más orgulloso que dices, ¿te acuerdas tú? Este fue mi momento de más orgullo. Sí. Bueno, el, 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 el orgullo de más momento que le gusta a un boxeador es cuando se corona campeón por primera vez. The best moment of my life was when I, I was world champion for the first time. De, de todo mundo. Everybody. The, the, the most important thing that you enjoy as a fighter is to become a world champion. Y en ese tiempo eran 15 asaltos. And don't forget, at that time it was 15 rounds. <laughs> This, my friend, is one of the most proud moments in my life, in my career in boxing. I appreciate your time and it Thank was you. a pleasure to meet you. Roberto Duran with Radio Rahim.